at this again. Uh, okay, so what we've been talking about is, is uh, first order delays. We've been illustrating some of the concepts with a more articulated model, a model of infection spread, but at whose dynamics we'll be talking about starting next time. We'll be diving into non-linear models, models whose evolution um, it doesn't depend just proportionally on, on individual stocks. But when we're dealing with first order delays, we are dealing with linear systems. We're dealing with a situation where we have uh, a flow by definition, um, whose uh, rate of flow is, is given by the number of people in the stock out of which it's, it's headed. Um, that is a terribly worded uh, characterization. So I'd like to, um, uh, like to, to show you a uh, first order delay firsthand, right? Um, so we're dealing with something like, like this guy here, okay? Um, and uh, we've been, you know, I, uh, I, I have a set of slides and I'm kind of jumping into, into this, but um, uh, with a first order delay, this outflow is proportional to the value of the stock. Uh, it can be uh, a value times the stock or the stock divided by a value, um, either one. The effect is the value of the stock is multiplied by some number. Um, and uh, sometimes we use the mean, sometimes we use a certain rate. The rate is one over the mean or the mean is one over the rate, right? Um, and the units of this, of all the flows into and out of a stock are the units of a stock itself. Um, okay, um, what I wanna talk about though today, we, we've talked about its dynamics here um, and cumulative deaths. And I, I think um, I'm gonna skip some, um, some mathematical components of this for the moment and come back to it in a later uh, coverage. I wanna talk now about this idea that this is a first order delay that it represents a delay of a certain signal. And particularly the first order delay, we've been approaching it a little bit like uh, by focusing on the stock, the value of the stock. We're gonna focus now on the value of the flow, okay? Um, the outflow and compare it to the inflow. We started to discuss that perspective last time, but um, I'd like to further it now. So I'd like to create a, uh, a new model here, um, or sorry, we actually created one last time called first order delay. I think you should have that. Um, uh, if you don't, uh, apologize, but we have an inflow that's given um, by 10 and an outflow that is, uh, whose formula is given by population divided by mean time. Um, and mean time is equal to 20 and the population starts with 40. We'd experimented with some of these dynamics last time, you'll recall. Okay, so where I'd like to take this um, is I'd like to actually modify the value of this inflow at a certain time and see how this outflow responds, okay? Um, last time we saw that the value of the stock um, has this goal-seeking behavior. It seeks equilibrium, it seeks balance. And the balance is defined by what condition? Can anyone say? It's defined by a condition where what equals what? Inflow equals outflow. Inflow equals outflow. Inflow. It's in balance. Yeah. It's in balance when the outflow equals the inflow. Um, if the inflow is greater than the outflow, what's the stock going to do? It's going to... If inflow is greater than outflow, it's going to do what? Increase. It's going to increase. And in, by increasing, what is that going to do as a result? It's going to, the value of the stock increasing will increase the value of the outflow. outflow. Of the outflow, which will bring the two outflow. closer and, to, and it will make up the gap, right? And if the inflow is less than the outflow, the stock will what? If the inflow is less than the outflow, the outflow is faster than the inflow, what's the stock gonna do? Like your bathtub. If the water's shooting out of it faster Thank than you. it's coming in, the value of the bathtub is gonna what? The value of the bathtub. Decrease. It's gonna Decreasing. decrease, yeah, the level of the bathtub. Um, um, I love mathematics so much, my bathtub is a level, but um, there's a value, but I guess not everyone's does. Uh, uh, so, 
So anyway, it's going to decrease until what happens? It's going to decrease. And as a result of the stock decreasing, the outflow is going to decrease. decrease. And therefore, decrease. It'll, it will get closer to balance and it will bring it until outflow equals inflow. Equal. Uh, yeah, until they're equal. That's exactly right. OK, good. So um, that was the perspective on the, on the stock. Let's talk about the perspective on the flows, OK? Um, one of the things you'll find is that uh, we could look at that whole analysis um, that we did last time. Um, let's, let's go do it right here. Uh, and we're going to uh, be running this. Here we have an inflow of 10. And the outflow, well, the stock started at 40. The mean time in population is 20. So what's the value of this flow initially? If the population was 40, the mean time in the population is 20, what's the value of the flow initially? Initially. OK, the, 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 the formula for this is population Five. divided by mean time. Population is 40. Mean time initially is 20. Population initially is 40. The mean time is 20. Yeah. Two? And it's two, right? It's 40 divided by 20, which is two. Ah, um, good. And, uh, and this inflow is, is 20. And so the stock's going to rise, or sorry, it's 10. So the stock's going to rise until what? If the inflow is 10, this stock will rise uh, until what equals what? Outflow equals 10. Outflow equals 10. That's right. So let's let's do that. And let's take a, a look at the outflow, right? Here's the outflow. And it's rising up and it's rising up until it's equal to the inflow. OK. Um, because at that point, the stock will be in balance, right? Um, so it's following the inflow, the inflow of 10. Great. Let's go change the value of the inflow. I'm going to go click on the inflow here, and I'm going to modify it. Oh my gosh, oh, give me a break, you can't. Oh man, okay. Um, well, an ugly fact got in the way of a beautiful theory. Um, uh, okay, um, that's, that's uh, annoying, but uh, we have other ways to skin this cat. Okay, fine. Um, so let's suppose that we were to, um, I think this should work okay. Uh, let's drag in a, um, actually, let me, I, I'm gonna test this, this theory. I should know if this will work. Uh, I'm, I'm just checking if I can modify this value. Yes, if it's a parameter, I can modify it. Well, so much, I, I, as I told Rachel, I try to never hard code values and here I hard coded a value and I'm in a bad, bad shape. So um, I'll say, um, uh, uh, so I'll say um, inflow rate. Sometimes we call it a rate. Um, we have to be careful because rate often is, is meaning proportion, but I'm going to say the inflow equals the inflow rate. Okay. Um, just to kind of let me frob that variable. Um, I, I should be able to frob it without it, but what can you say? Um, okay. Um, so all I did is I added a parameter called inflow rate and I made inflow this, the inflow rate. And I, I had this connection between them and green is the color um, A runnable model is the game. Okay, so let's, let's go run this model here. Um, so we saw that stock rose until, oh no, I should have set it to 10. I'm sorry, I, uh, uh, bad, bad, uh, Bad thinking on my part. It, it should be 10 just to make it comparable to before. Um, great. So this stock should rise until outflow equals inflow. In other words, it rises up to 10. This is what we saw before, right? There we go. Um, we're looking at it from the perspective of the outflow now, not the perspective of the stock, and it rises till 10. Great. It's, it's rising till 10. Now, let's suppose we were to change this inflow rate, and I want to change it to 5. What do you think is going to happen? What's going to happen if I change it to five? Let's think about this ahead of time. Well, the cat is out of the, oh man. Um, 
the ship has sailed, the, the, the train has left the station, the cat's out of the bag. Um, what's going to happen is if I change this to five, the, the, the stock will do what? Will drop until what equals what? Until outflow equals inflow. Okay, now let's suppose I change this to 50. Okay, um, I'm gonna change it to 50 now. And you'll notice it's rising, 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 rising until, so the stock is rising, the outflow is rising. The value of the stock is going up. Why is the value of the stock going up during, oh, why is the value of the stock going up during all that time? I change it to 50. What is it that makes the value of the stock go up like that? If I change this to, so I'm gonna get into equilibrium here, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, we have this outflow and equals inflow. And suppose I change this to 50. Why is the stock going up? Can anyone tell me? Intuition, why is it rising? Oh, yeah, um, okay. So uh, here, why is the value of the stock rising? Yeah. Um, is it because at the because, beginning? Uh, Sorry, you can go ahead. Um, I was just going to say at the beginning, um, you, your inflow is greater than your outflow, so your, your stock exactly. rises. Exactly. And because the stock rises, the outflow rises, and it's going to rise until the point where it equals the, inf the inflow, right? Um, and so whatever I change the inflow to, um, if I increase it, stock will rise and the outflow will rise until it equals the inflow. Uh, if I if I lower this value, the, the stock will have, if, if I lower it below the current balance, point of balance, the stock will have more people going out than coming in. It will fall until outflow equals inflow. Um, in short, it will, the outflow will follow this thing. Um, it will just follow it with a delay. It's going to, to approach it every time. And if I go and change it, you know, to, to two, it's going to drop down. It's following, it just has this kind of delay. It's, it's not a fixed delay, it's a, an exponential delay. It's sort of a, a, a delay uh, that it, you know, follows it uh, gradually over time and, and it gradually approaches it in an exponential way. So we can think of this uh, first order delay as, uh, as something that's where the outflow is following the inflow. And I, I wanna um, show this uh, with, with a bit of a, um, uh, of a uh, set of slides here. So there we go. So if we line these up, this is kind of what it would look like. The inflow shoots up and then the, the outflow follows it slowly. Um, and depending on the mean time in the stock or depending on the value of alpha, which is one over the mean time, it can follow the inflow more closely or more, more slowly, more, more quickly or more slowly. Um, uh, and the value of the stock, of course, will also rise uh, to different levels. Um, it will rise to higher levels or lower levels to achieve an outflow such that the outflow equals the inflow. So a first order delay is a delay of sorts. It, it's a delay between the outflow as expressed in terms of the inflow. The outflow is a delayed version of the inflow, okay? So this is a delayed version of, of, of this inflow. Um, okay, um, so that's one point I, I wanted to make. Um, uh, there's another point I wanna make, um, though that also we're going to use any logic to explore. Um, and uh, specifically, um, uh, I, I've noted that uh, first order delays are associated with goal seeking behavior. Um, uh, they're associated with the stock wanting outflow equals inflow and adjusting until outflows equals inflow. And there's a way to express this um, as a causal loop diagram. So we have a stock, we have a rate of outflow, and we have some rate of inflow. And 
you know, what happens is there's a surplus of inflow over outflow. And so it drives up the stock, which drives up the rate of outflow, which lowers the surplus. I mean, that's really what's, what's going on here. This is a balancing loop, as was said earlier. Um, and there's a formulation of first order delays that's identical to what we've been seeing, which uh, brings this out. So here's the thing. We've been dealing with a formulation like that down here, where we have an inflow. And we have an outflow whose formula is x over some delay, right? That, that's been our, our formulation. It turns out this is completely identical to a formulation which looks like this. So this is a formulation which kind of focuses on the flows. Um, uh, this is a formulation which focuses on the stock. So we have a target for the start stock. We're going to call it x target. And we're going to have a single flow flow in to the stock. Um, so this stock, I would call it X, except I have another X on the screen here. So I called it X2. And the formula for this flow is going to be given by X target minus X2 divided by the delay. And you may say, that's kind of weird. So we have this target, and then we have this stock that's subtracted off of it. So this is called, this. you could say this is a gap. It's a gap between the value of the stock and the value of the target. And if this gap is larger, in other words, if the target is much larger than the stock, this will be a larger value, right? Um, if the target's much larger than the stock, x target minus xt, x2 rather, will be large. And that will lead to a large flow into the stock. And that will tend to do what to the stock? If we have a flow coming in really quickly to X2, what would that lead X2 to do? X2 will increase. Increase, and one increase really quickly if this is a big gap. If this is a smaller gap, if X target is just a little bit above X2, X2 will increase slowly. Now, meanwhile, if X target is less than X2, by a lot, this is going to be very negative, right? If, if x2 is zero, and I'm oh, sorry, if x target is zero and x2 is right now it's a thousand, the value of the stock and the target is zero, it's going to be like minus a thousand. So, what's that going to lead this to happen? It will lead the flow to be very what? What do you? Go in the opposite direction. Yeah, it'll like, be negative. It'll be a negative flow, it'll be like a flow out of here. And that will tend to do what to the stock? The value will come decrease. Yeah, decrease. it'll tend to come down. It'll, it'll decrease. Right. Um, and if it's really negative, it'll decrease quickly. If it's just a little bit negative, it'll decrease a lot. It's following the target. If the target's much below X2, it'll come down quickly. If, if it's, it's if target is much above X2, it'll go up quickly. If the target's a bit above X2, it'll go up slowly. If the target is, is a bit below X2, it'll go down slowly. Um, because the value of the flow reflects how fast it's going up or down, right? Um, so let's let's build this thing. Um, and and you'll see it. Um uh so. So we're going to say, uh, Moise asked a question. So I'm going to create a model here. Um, uh, and maybe we'll save this one as another one. We'll say like first order delay um, target. We'll say target following first order delay. How, how's that? Um, target following first order delay. It's, it's one that follows the target. Um, OK, Moise had a question. Yes, Moise. Yeah, just a question about um, if we have a target uh, in the model that we want to try and achieve, um, would the model actually achieve that target, or would it be something like an like an uh, asymptote where it gets very very close but never actually achieves it? Well spoken. It's an asymptote. It's approaching it. Yeah, um, it's going to be approaching it. Um, okay. So in the interest of time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to engage in brutal brutalization of this model. Okay. So I'm going to uh, I don't, I don't know why this is still, I guess, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going to delete this outflow. And I'm going to 
go and delete these ones um, like that. And again, what we're shooting for, the thing for which we're shooting is a flow in to a single stock. And this flow is governed by the stock and this target by the difference between the two divided by the delay. So let's go, let's go do this. Um, uh, we will call this, um, um, we will call this uh, inflow rate. Well, for I, I'll call it uh, delay. Okay, um, I'm just going to call it delay. I'm going to call the flow flow because it's not an inflow necessarily. It could occur either way. It can be positive or negative. Uh, and I'm going to call this uh, this uh, target uh, just for simplicity. I'll call it x2. Okay, I mean, um, uh, fine. Um, uh, so here's the target, here's the flow, um, uh, sorry, this is the delay. And now we're gonna add a target parameter, okay? We're gonna add a X target, X target. So I'm just following uh, this and I, I actually capitalized it um, there, uh, fine. I'll, I'll call it X target with a capital T uh, at the beginning, okay, fine. Um, camel case. Um, uh, okay, so now we're going to create a link uh, between this. Come on, um, this guy is going to go there, and this one will go there. And what's the missing link? Where's the missing link? Don't tell me it's in Laetoli in Africa. Where is it? Where's the missing link here? Where does it need to go? There's a link that's missing. X2 to flow. Yeah, exactly. Um, X2 to flow. Um, so the flow, what's the, what's the formula for the flow? And anyone remember? The idea is that, that there'll be a gap, a gap between what two things? Between uh, the- The X target minus X2. X2 and X2. Good, 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 good. This is a sort of thing which could be in the final exam. Um, and it's good for you to have a sense of, that, that gap, it's gotta be really positive if X target is greater than X2, because we want this flow to go up, right? We want, we want it to flow into X2. Um, if, if target is way below X2, we want it to flow out of X2, be really negative. Okay, okay, great. And then how does the delay factor in here? Well, it's divided by the mean delay, okay? Um, you can think there's a delay and and bringing it into connection. You know, it's a delay in correcting it. Right, there's a certain amount of time it takes to correct it. Okay, um, and the initial value of the stock I'll make zero. Okay, um, and uh, it's saying that it's not a happy camper because I misspelled target. I should have done autocomplete. Okay, fine. Um, I'm going to do view problems window and there's no problems in mine. Um, you, can, you can build it there. Okay, so uh, let's run this thing. Let's run it, ready? Okay, we're gonna run, we're gonna run this, here we go. Um, so the target is zero right now. Um, let's go, you'll notice this is running. Let's go move the target to be 10, okay? Or let's say 20. Um, oh, look, the, the value of the stock is rising. What do you think it's going to rise to? It's going to rise to approach what? To try to approach what value? 20. 20, yeah. Because at what point will it no longer rise? It will no longer rise if this value of the flow is equal to what? To its target. To zero, yeah. It, it will no longer change if the flow is zero, right? This is the only flow into or out of it. If this flow is zero, it won't change. Under what conditions would this flow be zero if what equals what? X2 and X target. X2 is equal to X target. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's it's chasing the target. Okay, we'll, we'll go down target 10. Okay, there it goes. And it's going down. That should sound familiar. <laughs> it's just like the other side of 
what we did earlier with the first sort of delay, except we were doing it with inflow and outflow. Now we're doing it with a target and this. Okay, um, so this is another phrasing, another way of presenting or showing a first order delay. This is the same mathematics, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it, it may look like it has a different shape. The morphology of it may, may look different. But it's the same system, actually, if you look. And, and let me show you the mathematics of it. Um, so here we go. Um, so look, if you have this uh, system, as we do here with this target, and we have this gap, target minus x2 divided by delay. If you think about it, um, uh, you know what this is equal to, you could move this around and make it x target divided by delay. Um, uh, as a flow in and minus uh, x this x2 times delay and as the outflow. Um, so in other words, this whole thing is kind of equivalent to this. If this is 200 and we have a delay of 20, then that's equal to an inflow of 10 because x target is just formula, uh, uh, sorry, this uh, the rate of the inflow times the delay. So here, this target, is just the inflow times the delay. And it's because the stock in this formulation, which we were exploring earlier, the stock goes up until inflow equals outflow. And what's the value of the stock when inflow equals outflow? Well, the value of the stock is something which when you divide it by delay equals the, the, the inflow. So the value of the stock will be at when inflow equals outflow will be inflow times the delay. Hence, inflow time 10 times delay is 20, which is this X target. This stock for this lower one, which we were exploring with before, wants to get to the value where outflow equals inflow. And that value is the delay times the inflow. That's what it wants to get to. And that's exactly what this X target is representing. It wants to get to it. The X target is just framing it entirely in terms of this stock and this value, and it adjusts the flow to make that happen. Um, here, we kind of think the flow is following, the outflow is following the inflow. And that's one way to think about it. Or you could think about it as this stock wants to get to this target. These two are interchangeable. All you do is you take this, you make the, to, to phrase it as this, you make the value of the inflow be the value, whatever the target is, divided by delay. And there you go. And the outflow is just the stock divided by delay. You just expand this, this formula. So it's X target divided by delay minus X2 divided by delay. Two different ways of phrasing it, okay? Two different faces of a first order delay. One, Follow the value of the stock following the target, the other, the outflow following the inflow. Are people comfortable with that? Okay, now there's something cool we can do. There's something cool we can do with, with this and we're gonna have five minutes to do it. Six minutes, five. Uh, okay, so let's, let's get going, uh, let's get cracking. So we have this target following thing. And we're going to put in a, uh, another one of these. It's gonna look just like it. Uh, we're gonna have a delay uh, called perception delay there. And we're going to have a value of the stock and an inflow just like that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna save this here model. Um, okay, so uh, we, we already saved it. We're gonna save it as uh, uh, first sort of delay, uh, so we're going to say target following perception with perception delay. Mm. I'm going to show the effect of a delay in perception of, of something. Um, we're going to, it's going to be a, a, a regulatory system. This is a regulatory system. It adjusts the value of the, of the flow to make the stock equal the, uh, the target. But now we're going to, to have a, system where that perception that adjusts the flow is delayed a little bit, where you don't perceive exactly what is the case now, but what was, you're, you're operating what you saw a little bit ago. 
to make your judgment. So I'm going to make, I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to copy it. You could do it through the menu if you want to copy. And then I'm going to go down here, click down here and I'm going to paste. Oh my gosh, we put it over there. Well, worst things have happened. Okay, here we go. Um, so we're most of the way there. I just want to align it. Okay. Um, excellent. Okay, so uh, let's let's do some renaming. Let's call this perception delay. Hmm? Perception delay. Um, uh, and this is going to be a lot longer than the other one. So I'm going to say that this is 50 time units, not, not 10. Okay. Um, there we go. Uh, and instead of having just X target there, what I'm going to use as the target for this one mm, um, is going to be the uh, uh, is, is actually going to be the, the value of, uh, of this, uh, this stock. So in other words, perception is going to track what's the value of my stock. Um, so I'm going to eliminate this. There we go. And I'm going to hitch this guy up to this one. Boom. Um, and this, this flow here um, in this inflow one is going to depend on, instead of a, a separate target, it's going to depend on P. It's going this stock perceived P is going to follow this, this X2, okay? Um, so the value of this flow, instead of being um, uh, target minus X2, it's gonna be X2 minus, um, and this is gonna be perceived X. That's the name of the stock. We're gonna name the stock perceived X, okay? So, this is going to be the perception of, of this X. Um, so perceived, come on, perceived X. There we go. Um, okay, uh, perceived. So this stock is going to be like this one, but it's going to be based on a perception of it. And that perception will track it, but with a certain perception delay. So it's kind of like, um, you know, we're aware of, how cold it is outside. Um, our mental model will track the cold outside, but with a delay of hours, because uh, we're not checking all the time. And so we may have a understanding of the temperature that's off base. Okay, so this, this, this uh, flow in is X2 minus perceived X divided by perception delay. This should be by perception delay. There we go. Um, okay. Um, and then perceived X will then be used here uh, as we're going to have there be a, a gap between the target and the perception that's going to allow us to modify this. So it's kind of like we have an underlying situation represented by this, that we want to follow the target. But we can't magically know the true gap between the target and this underlying situation. Instead, we have to operate off of our perception of the underlying situation, which is delayed. So we're gonna adjust this flow to try to match our perception of the underlying situation with the target. So this, this gap here, instead of being target minus the stock, the true value of the stock, it's target minus our perceived value of the stock. That's this one which is going to be delayed and going to be incomplete, okay? Um, and then it's going to be divided by the delay. So we need one more, one more link here. There we go. And, and we're going to get rid of this, um, uh, excuse me, we're going to get rid of this link. And this flow is going to be the target minus the perception of this stock. Mm -hmm. divided by delay, okay? Um, okay, so we have a true underlying situation represented by X2. We wanna keep it matched up with a target, but we have no magic way of, 
of, of adjusting this flow. Imagine we have to do something as a human to adjust this flow. We have to judge what the gap is between the target and this underlying situation. In order to judge that, we don't magically know the underlying situation. What we know is a perception of the underlying situation. That perception tracks the underlying situation. Um, it tracks it in just the way we saw before. It tracks it by X2 minus perception of it divided by perception delay. So if this thing changes, we'll perceive it over time. We'll start to adjust to it. That's great. We'll start to, start to um, uh, we'll, we'll per start to perceive it more and more clearly what the underlying situation is, but it'll take some time to adjust. And meanwhile, we're adjusting the underlying situation as best we can with our perception of it. So we're, it's kind of like we're steering the car on the ice. And, you know, we think we've turned just enough, we've actually turned too far. And so we end up skidding over the median line or something. So here we go. I'm going to build this. And any questions uh, about this? Anyone struggling and you want me to show you one thing or two things in this diagram? Because we've gone pretty quick. Anyone want me to show you something? Okay. No one? Okay. So let's run this thing. What do you think you're going to see? Before we saw how it could follow a target, how it could zoom in on a target. What are we going to see here? Anyone? What do you think? So right now, the target is zero. Okay, let's adjust this target to be 20. There we go. Okay, this is the true underlying situation. It's shooting towards 20, just like before it looks like. It's going towards 20. Oh, it's gonna get to 20. Oh, it went, it went too far. What's going on here? Why'd it go beyond 20? Well, it's our perception of the situation. This thing's at like 40. Our perception is that it's at like nine. Because our perception is what? Why is our perception different than this? Because there's a long what? Delay. There's a long delay. delay. So it takes us a while to realize, oh, well, wait a minute. We've overshot, right? Meanwhile, this thing's going up. We're, we're taking action. We're, opening up the province because we didn't realize that it's going to cause problems. And now, uh, uh, okay, now, now we're, oh, wait, wait, we're, we're overshot. And now we know, realize we're overshot. Okay. Meanwhile, this situation is like way overshot. And we realize that now we're taking corrective action to bring down this flow, but we're, we're like way beyond the target value. The target was 20 and we went up to like 50 until we started to take action. And now we're taking action and it's going down. We're still seeking 20 as the target. We're going down. Hey, we're almost to 20. Hey, stop, stop, stop. Oh no, but our perception is that it's still 28 or 26. So we're still draining the stock and we're, we're under, you know, we're draining it way too low, right? Look at that, look at that. It's down to like five, six. Um, we're trying to get to 20. Oh no, now, okay, now we realize we've gone too low. We've gone too low. We gotta, gotta steer the right way again. And, and it's gonna come up again. And okay, here we go. Um, and you can see what happens. We get oscillations, right? We get oscillations around the desired value. And it's getting closer and closer over time. We're kind of honing in on the value, but it takes a while. And ladies and gentlemen, there's many situations like that in life. Uh, we have a, we want to get to a certain state. Uh, we want to adjust things to get to the state. The problem is our perception of the situation is delayed. It's off. It's, it's uh, out of kilter. And over time, we learn about the underlying situation. So our perception gets, gets uh, clearer, but we're still taking action all through that time. So often we're taking action with an old understanding of the situation. And as a result, we overshoot, we overcorrect, we, we take, go too far in one direction 
Um, and we don't realize we've already gone past the target. And so we start to correct the route. And steering a car is just one of many examples. Governments, companies make these examples, make all these decisions all the time. And there's many other situations like this with risk perception, et cetera, where we also, you know, we also tend to steer things, but with too long a delay. So the motto for today um, is that, you know, we model these regulatory systems in two different ways. Uh, the, there's two faces of a first order delay. And with the second of those faces, target following, which is based on the value of the stock, we found if there's a delay involved in the regulatory feedback, if we're trying to adjust the situation to match this target, if there's a delay in it, like a perception delay, it'll tend to lead to these big oscillations. So balancing feedbacks with big delays tend to lead to oscillations. And there's those who will argue that many of the things we see in a business cycle with business cycles, for example, over long periods of time, uh, the waves we see and, and um, as a result of corporate decision-making are coming from these delayed decision-making things. And IT is a role to play because it can lower the, the delays. It can give you just in time information or closer to on time information. But um, these are important uh, insights in when you try to control systems that delays can cause big, uh, big issues. Now, I have to apologize because I had a, um, I should have offered another uh, comment um, uh, on um, when it came to today's.